So the Word of God is quick and powerful, is able to divide his thunder, soul, and spirit of the joints and marrow. Now, I don't have time to get into all this about the immune system and all that stuff as a teaching by itself. And is a discerner, listen carefully, folks, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Well, you see, I'm a fearful person. The Word of God will help you discern that you're not a fearful person, but you have come into agreement with fear. You have come into agreement with the feelings of hopelessness and despair. You decided to major in minors. You decided to embrace things that are inferior. You've decided to call actually evil good. And you refuse to call evil evil. Because you were so comfortable being survivors. The song you sang this morning is that you're not called to be survivors. You're called to be thrivers. The world are survivors. You should be thrivers. The world should be depressed. You should be happy, well-balanced, and excited to be sons and daughters of God and happy to be here and get on with the program. That's what you should be. Just get on with it. Say, well, what about the others? I'm not talking to others. I'm talking to you. You. One of the things that I've bumped into over the years that's really key to depression, and I wouldn't be surprised that some of you struggle with this occasionally, but the big thing that I've bumped into that is problematic is in people's minds is, who am I? Why am I here on this planet? And who cares? You know I'm ringing it right down home now, don't you? It's a plague, even in the Christian church. Who am I? Sometimes I ask people that are coming through for ministry, I said, who are you? I thought they're going to have a heart attack and leave. It was like asking the most horrible question. Uh, who am I? I don't know. My name is Charlie. I didn't ask you your name. I said, who are you? And ask you what your name was at all. I want to know who are you on the inside. Sometimes in, in therapeutic sessions, I pull out a piece of paper and I'll slap it down and sit here. Write 10 things that you think you are on the inside as fast as you can write and let none of the what you do. Because who you are is not what you do. But in today's society, who you are is what you do. But who you are is not what you do, but who you are is what you do. Did you get that? Why am I here? I know I'm here. I'm just dying to go to heaven. It's the point that a man wants to die, and then the judgment, I'm getting ready for it. Lord, have mercy. That's why you're here? And who cares that I'm here? This is part of your ministry right now. I'm going to move into some areas here with you. I want you to open your hearts. If you've ever struggled, if you get right here right now, spirits of heaviness will not rule you. You will rule them. I'm going to go back to Psalms 139. I'm going to read the whole chapter. Aren't you glad it's not Psalm 119? <laughs> you guys have been an excellent audience today. I appreciate you coming. I've appreciated your humor. I've appreciated your hearts, and I'm a very direct teacher, so sometimes I know that I have made you gulp a few times, and I know you. most of you think I'm just talking to you personally. No, I'm not. I'm talking to you, and if the shoe fits, wear it, because God loves every single one of you here, and you didn't come here necessarily because you felt like it. You came here because the Spirit of God drew you, 
because we're not here just to be politicians in, in Christ. It's a matter of life or death, folks. And you're special, and I love you so much. I wish I had the time to sit down and, and spend an hour with each of you. Just to bond with you. Get to know you as my brother and my sister. It's such a tragedy being a teacher and meeting all these special brothers and sisters and only had time to hang out with them. <sighs> you know, after that. Psalm 139. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. Who am I? Years ago, I had a prophet pull me out of an audience when I was young in the Lord, a year and a half. I won't tell you the whole story, but I remember these words coming out of this prophet's mouth. I didn't know him from a cornfield in Iowa. He didn't know me. And God spoke to this boy, to the prophet. And God said to me, you're mine. You belong to me. I've called you to do a work in your generation. Be all that I've called you to be and don't Listen to lies. That's all I remember. The guy went on forever. I remember nothing didn't record it. That did enough for me. And that has burned inside me like a fire for 30 years. I have no idea what he wanted me to do. So I just showed up and it has evolved. I wasn't called to be an evangelist. I was called to the church to preserve the seed of God in spite of the devil, to bring healing and hope and deliverance when there seemed to be no hope and no one would care. You're so special. Don't you ever let anyone tell you that you're not the apple of his eye. Don't let anybody tell you that you're not engraved in the palms of his hands. Don't let anyone ever tell you that your names are not written down in the book of life. Do not let anybody tell you that you're not a son or a daughter of the Father. And let no one tell you that you're not betrothed to the Lord Jesus as a wife. Let no one interfere with who you are. Embrace it, bride of Christ. Embrace it. He said, but I'm not uh, ready. He knew that when he saved you. It's amazing. People, people get saved and know not to get saved. They think God hates them. That's the strangest thing I've ever seen. God saves you, and then you wonder if he likes you. What is that? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah he saved you because he didn't like you. Right. It's amazing the junk we listen to. Yeah. 